This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 8th chapter. Now Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say I am? And the disciples answered him, Many say that you are John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets of old. And then Jesus asked his disciples, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered. He said, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and then be killed and three days later rise again. Now Jesus said all this quite openly. And Peter then took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter. Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but rather on human things. Then Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will, in fact, save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their very life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from Creator God the Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ brought to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, as I reflected on the gospel and the lessons today, I, the headline for me was uh, this idea of standing tall. And the focal point for me was this kind of standoff, if you will, between Peter and Jesus. And so, it uh, tends to be our tradition in the past year or so is once we get a headline or get a title of a sermon, immediately go to Google Images and try to find something that works. And uh, came up with, uh, there were a lot of cartoons of giraffes standing tall, you know, and goofy little things. And then, I, then all these pineapples. Be a pineapple. Wear a crown. Stand tall and be sweet inside. Now, I had never seen that. Before. Have you, has any, a hand, has anybody seen this? The pine, I don't, you know, it's an interesting piece. Okay, good. So, I mean, I'm seeing all these images of pineapples and this sort of thing, and the, probably the Pineapple Growers Association. But uh, I think we can see the image, too, the Christian, or the faith-filled image of what that is, too. The, the crown being our understanding of the kingdom of God and the desire to, to uh, represent the kingdom of God, standing tall and resolute and being sweet inside, sharing God's love with each other. So, well, you know, I guess we can be pineapples. It's a little bit different, but, you know, they, they taste pretty good, too, but... And I don't know that Jesus or, uh, or uh, Peter ever had a pineapple during their days. I don't think they, they had them there, but uh, they had other sweet fruit. In any event, um, the focus really is not so much on being a pineapple, but on the idea of standing tall. And certainly, in this lesson today, we see uh, Jesus and 
Peter kind of standing very tall. Uh, this is the height of Jesus' popularity. There is a lot of energy surrounding his message. Uh, a lot of people are excited, but also the powers of be that be are, are beginning to become a little concerned. The dust has been stirred up. The social, economic, religious dust of the era has been stirred up a little bit by Jesus. And there's a lot of interesting energy going down. But the fact of the matter is there are challenging times ahead as well. Jesus is aware of this. And uh, so he does a little bit of market research, though, with his disciples. And he asks them the question, well, who, you know, a lot of stuff's going on right now, guys. What, what are people saying about all this? Who do people say I am? And the disciples respond back to Jesus, well, you know, one of the prophets, Elijah, John the Baptist, and so on and so forth. And then Jesus asks the disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter stands forward and he says, well, you are the Messiah. You are the chosen one. You are the Alpha and Omega. And Jesus immediately says, don't tell anyone. You see, guys, I've got more work to do. And the fact of the matter is, the work that we are doing is stirring things up. And it will continue to stir things up because we're going to continue to do what we are doing. The fact of the matter is, guys, and you know this to be true, that 90% of the people we see are oppressed. They are hungry. They are working crazy hours and they're getting very little in return. And there's a small minority of people who are taking complete and total advantage of the people we see. And they're beginning to become nervous. Because the order of things, you see, may in fact go through a change. And I tell you the truth, we are not going to stop. This message will continue because God's will for all of humanity, God created everyone. God loves everyone. God wants all people to be provided for. God does not want anyone to take advantage of another. God did not give certain people certain gifts so they could simply enrich themselves at the price of life. I will deliver this message until my death. And that message will be memorialized. And that cross will stand as the symbol of God's love for humankind and what all followers must do. Not only with their minds, but with their very lives. And Peter said, I'm not going to let you die. I'm not going to let you die. I can't. We, uh, as Christians, we have this understanding of God's love. We have this understanding that we are to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we have been taught that the neighbor is all of humanity. There's no other way to unpack it. If you go back to the Good Samaritan, there is no other way to unpack that message of the neighbor. It's everybody. And it's not easy. It's hard to stay in that position. There are risks. We don't live in a world that demands that of us. 
School doesn't demand it. Government doesn't demand it. Business doesn't demand it. Culture doesn't demand it. Nobody demands that type of love. But yet, that crown on that pineapple is a symbol that what the kingdom is about is everyone. You know, the good news, the good news in all of this is Jesus says to Peter, he says, get behind me, Satan. You got your mind on earthly things instead of heavenly things. This is what must be done. And there's no turning back. We will deliver a message. We may not live physically to see the fulfillment of that message, but we will deliver the message. And there will be generations that come after me who will deliver the message. And I will send the Spirit of God to help people. People who decide to move forward. And we'll keep delivering that message as long as there's life on earth that the true God wants us to experience the fullness of love. We are uh, uniquely brought into this world. Spiritual creatures, each gifted with a fire, a fire that burns inside our souls. A fire that defines who we are. And the question we each must ask ourselves, this powerful, this divine fire that is in fact inside of each of us, where is that fire directed? Is it directed to shalom? the fulfillment of peace, or is it directed somewhere else? And if we're honest with ourselves throughout the day, sometimes it's shalom, sometimes it's Michigan football, or Michigan State, or sometimes it's this, or sometimes it's that. That's reality. But what God is calling us to do is not lose sight that that power of that flame that each of us have been given can make a profound, overwhelming difference in life, no matter what the context. Because God owns it all. Every business, every school, every boardroom, every church, every playground, every park, Every store, God owns it all. And our flame, our energy, given to us by God, if it directs itself to shalom, can make some sort of difference everywhere. So, I guess be a pineapple, stand tall, crown tall, sweet inside, amen.